Doing it from the mass loss, doing it from the energy release. And you can see, look, there's some, no doubt, oddities. This is paper on gypsum board. So sometimes you get results that are nonsensical. The experimentalist doing this has to use some interpretation or go back and get some more data. But for the most part, you take a material here, three-layered polycarbonate, not so bad, right across the board. Here, uh, this is expanded polystyrene, not so bad, all right? Within reason, you would accept plus or minus something. Uh, what do we have here? This is a uh, comparison now of these materials measured by Hopkins, one of my master students, under flaming in a cone calorimeter. This is under nitrogen which, with Archie, Torsen. This is by direct measurement DSC. You can see the comparisons. Now again, we are burning polycast PMMA, not type G. That explains that difference. But here, these are more universe, uniform. But again, if you don't buy the same material, just because you buy the plastic as nylon, it's not the same nylon that somebody else burned, because they can put anything in it and still call it nylon. Uh, this is how nice results come out for materials that melt, polyethylene, poly Nothing to factor late, and the others you see here. See, you get very nice slopes, and you get a, an L that would make you feel, you know, harmonious. Uh, <coughs> typical values of total energy. I think anyone would agree that if you burn things in the cone and you take the energy under the curve, generally it's about constant. Now here is something like wood that uh, down here this wood is probably not even burning completely. So that's the low values. But later on, you, you pick it up. Here's something, polyurethane. It's reasonably constant. So here's the properties you can measure by devices like a cone calorimeter, uh, processing it, heat of combustion, or you can get heat of gasification. You can take the ratio, HRP, TRP, you can unravel this into thermal conductivity and density and specific heat and ignition temperature. This is critical heat flux and total. So just to review, if we look at PMMA and we look at different methods, this is the FM result by the fitting method. This is time average methods by like phone calorimeter. This is direct me measurements of these properties. Now, if you use the DSC, you're using like less, like a milligram of the sample. If it's, you know, this here tabletop, a milligram may not represent the bulk material. So that's the disadvantage of doing that. When I first started in this field, people said you can't use TGA and DSC. But it's coming now that you can, and you can use it effectively. So uh, my opinion is you can use it, but it's going to give you representation for just the local material where this is more bulk, and of course this fitting is bulk. It, it, so you see the uh, agreement in the properties. It, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Let me just give you an example. The people using the new method would use a computer model, open foam or FDS, and try to model fire. I say you can model fire by simple methods, but you can also model it by correlations. So you could take correlations. And what I said earlier is any fire scenario, if you know the heat flux, the characteristic heat flux, can be modeled by HRP, TRP, critical heat flux, and total energy. And I support that that can be done. So I'll give you an example. One is UL94B, 
I don't know how many of you know that test, but it's a test that's prevalent in the plastics industry, invented by UL. It's a small sample vertical test with a pre-mixed Bunsen burner here. ISO room corner test, probably everyone knows that. It's a, it's a pretty good test. And uh, at one time, the cone calorimeter was going to be perhaps the standard in Europe because people at SP showed that it could agree with this test. But politics got in, <coughs> in the way, and Europe invented a whole new test, single burning item test. My God, we're all crazy in this field. So, Anyway, this is a busy slide, but basically what it tells you is the following. Here's data for all of these samples. There's about 50 samples. And this is the heat release rate calculated from those samples, knowing the heat flux in the test and the HRP property of the material. Now the heat flux in the test was determined by us measuring the heat flux from that little burner and from the way this material burns. And the way it burns and the little burner used to ignite it, the heat flux turns out to be coincidentally about the same. It's about 60 kilowatts per meter squared. So we, we measured that very carefully. <coughs> uh, and so you can calculate the heat flux that you get from the sample. You can see these samples down here, very low heat flux. Well, we have a criteria for ignition if it's below this value in this test. I, I gave you a different number before. That number depends on the heat, of, heat, heat transfer coefficient. <coughs> in this test, things are laminar. In the cone, where the heat transfer coefficient is 10, in this test, because it's laminar, it's much higher. And so, if a material has a value like this, it will not ignite under pilot conditions. If it has a value less than this, it should not burn. These, these values come from analysis. And you can see how they fit here. If it's under this, it won't spread upward. We have a paper on this. It was at the Leeds conference. So what you see here is below this, it will not ignite. And here, it gets V0 rating, which in the test means no ignition. Here, if we go to these samples, it means it failed the test. It spread upward, or it burned almost forever. And so all of these materials here, having a value greater than 300, fit into that category. In between, you get things bouncing around. It's understandable. If anyone's ever done this test, you don't get the same answer twice. You have to average six samples, or take the worst one, or something like that. Uh, if you want to distinguish between V1 and V2, V2 means it starts to drip and burn the cotton down below with flames. I mean, we didn't model that. It's a crazy test, but that's it. Now, instead of V1, V2, and V0, if you know this, I think you know a lot more, and you know a spectrum of the results. And I put my money more on this, an HRP value that you get from the cone by analysis, than using gradients that are meaningless. Let's go to ISO room corner test. I did a lot of work with this. Much of the data comes from either SP, their experiments, or the LSF laboratory in Italy with Silvio Messa giving me his data. And so there's about 50 different tests here. Uh, each symbol represents a test and an outcome. All the black ones, no flashover. Uh, all the white ones, yes, there was a flashover, 
and different times. You know in that test they, de they decide, decide flashover, flames come out the door. That's their definition. It's about one megawatt fire when that happens. So here you can see the different results. We put them on this plot now, which is a correlation, has some theory behind it. I won't get into it, but it has TRP, HRP, total energy, heat flux represented of that test. That heat flux is driven by the burner in that test. And there's values for that. You can see what it is here. Again, curiosity is about 60. Where in UL it's a laminar flame, this is a turbulent flame against the wall. It's just coincidental that they're about the same value. Just coincidental. Uh, here's some theoretical curves that we got, uh, but you, you can see here